this video is sponsored by Swagbucks. Now this is a yikes from me. As per usual, this week I put up four different tasty recipes on my Instagram story for you guys to vote on. If you don't already follow me, it's David underscore Seymour one. And I was not surprised to see that the fluffy Japanese pancakes won by a few percentage points. But let me just tell you, I have never received such backlash in my DMs on the recipe that won. So as a result of that, and the combination of the queen herself, Rie, voting on the mac and cheese, that's what we're gonna do this week. Also, because I tried to order those three inch ring molds from Amazon and they're not gonna be here until next week, so we'll do that next time. <laughs> but anyways, this recipe is from Tasty Series where they have one of their chefs take a very basic food and try to jazz it up a little bit. She took some boxed macaroni and cheese and added stuff like lobster and some panko breadcrumbs, a bunch of different spices. It looks really delicious. I also have to flambe my cheese sauce. This will be the first time I've ever tried this. So it should be interesting. Let's get right into it. So as with any one of these videos, I had to run to the store to pick up a few different ingredients that I didn't already have. And you guys would be really surprised to find out how much I was able to get with some gift cards that I made from this week's sponsor, Swagbucks. Guys, Swagbucks is a way to earn cash and gift cards to a ton of different places from the comfort of your own home just by taking surveys, by playing games, by watching videos. I wish I knew about something like this when I was in college. If you got some free time, click the link in the top line of the description and you'll receive $5 just for signing up, just as a welcome bonus. So do yourself a favor, click the link in the top line of the description to earn your first $5, see what kind of offers you can earn for yourself. It helps me out, it helps Swagbucks out, it's just a beautiful thing. But guys, now that I do have all of the ingredients I need freshly purchased with some of my gift cards, um, I started all of the prep work. I chopped up some fresh parsley, some shallot, and some fresh garlic. Pretty much all of these ingredients are gonna be used in different components of this recipe. I just wanted to get this out of the way first. And really I should wait a little bit before opening this up, but my poor self cannot help but to rip open my lobster tails, the star of this dish. Unfortunately, they are already chopped in half, but it should be okay. You wanna toss these down in some steaming hot boiling water just for three or four minutes until that shell gets a nice bright red and your meat starts to become a little opaque. Remember, you don't have to cook this all the way through because it's gonna finish cooking with the macaroni at the end in the oven. Um, but once I took it out and let it cool for a while, I chopped it into some bite-sized pieces and put it aside for now. Next up is probably what I think I'm most likely to fail, and that is the bechamel sauce. I made this once other time for the 100 layer lasagna, and according to you guys, I completely failed that altogether. But this recipe is straight from Rie, so I have very high hopes. I heated up some milk along with my chopped up garlic. I'm thinking this will like infuse the milk a little bit. <laughs> once your milk is heated, you can very slowly add it into your flour mixture. And I have to say, I think this looks a lot better than the last time I tried it, so I'm gonna set it aside for now. And now we have to try to flambe. Unfortunately, in the video, Rie doesn't mention how much sherry wine she used, um, so I did ask her. I also asked her for any tips as to not burn my house down. And she did say I'm supposed to use a stainless steel pan. My only problem is the largest stainless steel pan I have is this which is not very big, I'd say it's maybe eight inch wide. So I'm gonna add the first few ingredients in here, flambe it in this, and then transfer it to my Dutch oven to finish baking. You guys will see that in a second. I think I forgot to mention that you're supposed to save your lobster shell um, because you can actually put those in and you end up getting a lot of flavor out of these. About six or seven minutes into this, I added about a tablespoon of tomato paste also a little bit of that leftover water that we boiled the lobster tails in. This just makes it easier so stuff doesn't burn as quick and so that tomato paste can break down a little bit easier. And once most of that water has cooked off, it is unfortunately for me the big moment. I added in a quarter cup of my sherry and 
Listen, I know I didn't get the biggest flames, but I'm just happy that everything's in one piece and hopefully at least some percentage of the alcohol is burned off. A couple of minutes after that, I transferred that to my Dutch oven, which is going to be the only vessel that we're cooking in for the rest of this recipe. I added a few ladles worth of that lobster water and then about a cup to a cup and a half of my vegetable stock. And while I let that come to a boil, I heated back up my bechamel sauce and then added in the cheese packet. And now that that is looking like a nice bright yellow orange and our stocks are boiling, I dumped in the pasta. Now, this may seem like a lot of liquid. I'm honestly second guessing myself, but my biggest issue with macaroni that you put in the oven is it gets so damn dry. So now whenever I make a macaroni and cheese that goes in the oven, I super overestimate the liquids and the cheeses that I put in to hopefully prevent that from happening. I dumped in my pot of cheese sauce, mix this all together. I wish you guys could smell this right now. It smells so good. And the very last thing I have to do is just toast some panko breadcrumbs along with a little bit of the fresh parsley from earlier and hold that off to the side while we toss in our chunks of lobster across the top of this, cover everything up with the panko breadcrumbs, and throw it in the oven for seven or eight minutes, I'd say at 375. Don't go any higher or more time than that because again, you run the risk of everything drying out. And I know as I take this out, it's boiling hot and I should have let it cool first, but I could not help it. I got myself a ladle full and this is looking delicious, so let's give it a try. If you're sitting at home or at school or at work right now and pretending that you don't want to try this, you're just a big liar. I just love the smell of lobster too. Oh my God. I just wanted to eat that a whole tail when I boiled it before. Mm-hmm. Yep. Make it fancy. <laughs> that is so good. I am a fan of just normal box mac and cheese, but you forget what it could taste like with an extra, what, 15, 20 minutes of work. And the majority of that time is waiting for the lobsters to boil and waiting for it to bake. So it's not that much work. I do wish I browned the breadcrumbs a little bit more. Some of them are still kind of like not as crispy as I would like them. Rie, you have done it again. 10 out of 10, no question. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave me a big like. Again, thank you to Swagbucks for sponsoring this video. I don't do many sponsorships. I only really do companies or websites that I think will resonate with you guys and that's relevant to the program. Uh, so shout outs to them. Follow me over on Twitter and Instagram if you do not already. Other than that, have an awesome end of your week, and I will see you right back here next time. Peace. With the M, M without the A, D With the burgers and my money, super lazy Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me Try and supersize my life with my A-team Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision we can